good evening everybody welcome back to the channel I am the Yorkshireman reacts and tonight it is officially finally time for the last ever episode of bottom I am really fucking sad I've loved this show I cannot believe how quickly this show that this comedy became one of my all-time favorites I mean it's ridiculous no comedy any type of show whatever it is comedy or drama should have that kind of effect on a person within a few episodes but it was literally by oh, just over halfway through the first series I knew I'm gonna love this I'm gonna go out I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be watching this for the rest of my life I'm gonna love it and the effect that Rick had on me you know it's the same thing instantly became one of my favorite whatever you want to describe him as he, he just became one of my favorites um, I'm, I'm just gonna miss it so much you know like I hate that they only did three series and they were, there were only six episodes in each series I hate that it's like Faulty Towers there's nowhere near enough of it but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not like I can do anything about that, is it? So, I guess we'll just get into it. So, uh, yeah, it's the final episode of Bottom, Series 3, Episode 6, Carnival. Let's go. Short tempered, aren't they? Yeah. Well, about four or five thousand of them by the looks of things. Yeah. Oh, but it's wonderful though, Eddie. I mean, look, all the local communities are out there on the streets. Beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. Oh, I love carnival time. Carnival oh, look at that time. Policeman over there. Which one? The one jumping up and down, waving his arms. The one that's on fire? Yeah. <laughs> Now, well, he's got no one to blame but himself. It was him that started it all by appealing for calm. Is it? Yeah. Provocative <laughs> bastard! I mean, what's the point in having a carnival if you can't get your shopping done? <laughs> shopping? Oh, oh great. Yeah. Did you see the floats? No, I thought I'd flushed it. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the Nazis! Hooray! Uh, that should get things going again. Uh, Turn into the lamb and flag. Oh yeah, I thought so. Dick's throwing them out. Uh, oh no, the police have thrown them back in! Throw them back in! That, that's just stupid! That's mindless! That's antisocial, that is! What? Throwing those bottles about like that! No, no, Eddie, they're empty! Oh! Oh, oh, that's all right then. <laughs> you get stuck in me, that one on me. <laughs> you get stuck in me, that one on me. <laughs> well, that'll teach you, Eddie. You should stay out of politics. <laughs> oh, look, this Father O'Malley. <laughs> <laughs> nice shooting, Father. Nice <laughs> shooting. Oh, he's had a few, hasn't he? Yeah. I think he should put his clothes back on. Yeah. Funny, this is just a normal night in London now, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is. Mind you, I think it's that that's frightened off the Nazi League. What? Have they gone? Yeah. Have they gone? Oh. Hey! <laughs> that's not particularly funny or special, but he's just, you know. <laughs> you know? I just. Oh, I love it. Ah, you know, these must be the best seats for the annual Hammersmith Riot. I know, I know. <laughs> they are the... What do you mean? Oh, not that <laughs> well done! <laughs> best part of the show so far! Encore! Oh. Encore? No, we don't. 
up one of those fucking Hamas kebab shop. Yeah. It was fatty, he threw the petrol bomb. Yeah. I saw him take out the insurance only yesterday. Yeah. Same every year. Yeah. Well, it'll be drinks on him again tonight. Yeah. Oh, look. Here come the fire brigades. Yeah. And fatty's stopped them. He's having a word. And money's changing hands. And they're off again. <laughs> what? Oh. He must be going for the full rebuild again this yeah. year. And just in the nick of time, too. I was getting a bit peckish. <laughs> Do you know, that's what I love about this country, Richie. Tradition. I mean, in the olden days, we used to let the Germans do this sort of thing for us. I know, I know it's shocking, isn't it? We used to let the Germans do this sort of thing for us. Wow. Wow. Also, we didn't really let them. We just kind of had no choice. <laughs> I mean, us Brits are so much better at the other I mean, look at that, Eddie. Look at that. Half of London's a light. That's British craftsmanship, that is. Oh, look. There's the primary school postman, Pat Flo. Uh -huh. They've made a little van and everything. Uh -huh. Oh, look, look, they're ram-raiding the off-license. <laughs> oh, oh, bless them. They're too young to know, aren't they? What? Well, you've done it already. Yeah. Oh. Well, you have to get up pretty early in the morning to beat Uncle Eddie. <laughs> Malibu! The Malibu's stuck to the ceiling. <laughs> oh, I thought... The, you know, Eddie... He likes bitter. You know, that's his drink. And, um... And, uh, yeah, all right, whatever. I'll, I'll go with it. Well, it's as I always say, Eddie. I mean, the carnival is a marvellous business opportunity. Mm. Would you like me to toast your marshmallows? Good cooker. <laughs> oh, Richie, stop up with the dirty oh, mind. Yes, yes. yes marvellous, Eddie. Get on with it, yes. He's getting Duval Entendre disease again. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a second bout. <laughs> yes, yes. Right, now I think we should just wait for the window of curries to blow, mm -hmm. and then we'll pop out and do ourselves a bit of shopping. Right. There's a 28-inch surround sound TV with fast text, FST, NICAM, and loads of other bollocks that nobody understands. <laughs> but I've had my eye on for a couple of months now. Oh, bit overdone. <laughs> right? Shopping. A bit shopping. overdone! I'll go grab hold of my ballpoint. Oh, uh... <laughs> Richie, no time for crap double entendres. Carrie's window's just blown. They've just thrown Aswad through it. Have they? Aswad? Who's Aswad? Banzai, baby. Balaclava's on and let's go shopping. Oh, God, here we go. Eye holes. Eye holes, lads. being run over by the riot squad. Well, two wrongs don't make a right, young man. Just because you're being run over doesn't mean you have to smash a television set. Like I've been watching Sophie Griggs and peeling a banana or washing a cucumber or anything. <laughs> washing a cucumber. <laughs> like I've been watching Sophie Griggs and peeling a banana or washing a cucumber or anything. <laughs> Who's he whacking off there? Me, of course. What? She's married. I know, to the wrong bloke. Still, at least we got the duck. <laughs> the duck? Yeah. It's made out of plastic. <laughs> Eddie, what in the name of Greek buggery? Is the use of a plastic duck? <laughs> what in the name of Greek buggery? So many great phrases from this. Eddie, what in the name of Greek buggery? Bugger. The use of a plastic duck. It floats in the bath. Hello? But why? It's hollow. <laughs> from Arthur Weasley to Richard Richard. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? 
question! <laughs> Why the duck? It came free with the telly. <laughs> Eddie, everything came free with the telly. We were looting. Yeah. Why didn't you get a free telly with the telly? Well, it'd sink in the bath. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> we in this, huh? What else did you get? Oh. 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 Well, what else did you get? <laughs> I got a free police baton. Ooh, interesting. Let's have a look. Yeah, well, I can't quite lay my hands on it. <laughs> no word of a lie, actually. That's the first thing I thought as soon as he said police baton. I bet it's up his ass. Nasty. Yeah, it's one of those new long ones as well. <laughs> with the side handle. Oh! Explain merry hell with my liver. <sighs> Nasty. Anyway, never mind about me. How did you get on? Well, not bad, not. Never mind how he got on. How did you get in? <laughs> with a. Qualified to comment. <sighs> Nasty. Anyway, never mind about me. How did you get on? Well, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Boots was a bit crowded. Yeah. Crowded. And, uh, w. H. Smith's was jammed and uh, on fire a bit. <laughs> on fire a bit. <laughs> w. H. Smith's was jammed and. Uh, on fire a bit. There's an awful lot of blood in CNAs. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I parked the post office on my way home, you know, yeah. to take some money out. Yeah. It was a nightmare in there. You should have seen the queue. You should have seen the queue. <laughs> By the time I got to the front, there was practically nothing left. There's no counter, no grill, no nothing. Tell me something new. I mean, Laura Ashley was practically impenetrable. <laughs> Well, I have heard that. <laughs> oh, go on, have another hobnob. Don't oh, you are evil. <laughs> Don't you start on me. <laughs> oh, it's just so good to get your feet up, isn't it? No, I'm not that pervy. <laughs> are you not? Did you see the fight going on in the semolina you like? Oh, such a mess. <laughs> in the war. What can you do? I don't know. I blame the TV. I blame that channel tunnel. I blame those sprouts we had yesterday. <laughs> do you know, I think I'm going to make a fresh pot of tea. This one's been sitting here for three and a half hours. Oh! Help me in. <laughs> How did you get on, Eddie? Well, I was just coming out of the... What's with the accent all of a sudden? <laughs> Count me in. Oh. How did you get on, Eddie? Well, I What's was this? just coming out of the body shop, and there were an awful lot of bodies in there, I can tell you. And I thought, do you know, I've just got time to nip down to the greengrocers and loot a couple of pounds of broccoli florets. <laughs> and you'll never guess what. What? <gasps> We've been burgled! Well, you may have been, young man, but I have never in my life. As a Christian, I'm so tightly clenched that... Oh, oh, oh. Burgled. There was 156 cases of Malibu there. 156! That was going to see me through to the weekend. Ah! Bastards, call the police. Eddie, you can't call the police at carnival time. They're all on fire. Bastards! Oh, do try and be a bit more Buddhist about it. Bastards! Oh, bastards! Bastards! If it wasn't for the fact that I've got another 36 cases upstairs, I'd be really angry! <laughs> That's it! I'm gonna write to my MP. Why? Write to your MP? What? Because you've had some Malibu that you stole anyway in the first place, stolen from you. Yeah. Unless your MP is... Uh... Oh, I don't know. Fuck off. Because... I love her. <laughs> Eddie, Tony Blair is a man! She's not! She's not! She is! She is! She's not! She's not! Quiet! <gasps> Spectacles. Don't mention that prick in front of me, please.
No, jeez, no. Quiet! <gasps> Spectacles. Spectacles. <laughs> Spectacles back on. Spectacles now back calm on. calm down about Tony Blair. Oh. And anyway, fret ye not, me old amigo. Oh. Because if you care to take a peek inside my trousers, <laughs> I think you'll find something down there that'll put a little smile on your face. <laughs> I'm not even going to do the gag, just carry on, but... Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. I think you'll find something down there that'll put a little smile on your face. <laughs> what, you mean? Yes. Sharon Stone. <laughs> no. Sharon Stone. With a sort of, where's Eddie expression on her face. <laughs> Wearing nothing but a honey sandwich. No. A jam sandwich? No. But you got it! It's a kebab, isn't it? It's a kebab! It's not a kebab! It's not a kebab! Sharon Stone, painted green. Oh. Vacuum packed oh. with a copy of the Racing Post sticking oh. out of her bum. Sharon! <laughs> Fight! There's a sofa there. You know me. Wait, how's it go? <laughs> I forgot! <laughs> 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 oh, they couldn't do up the final episode without a fight! <laughs> 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 Just, just shut up, you sick, depraved, Eddie Dessard! <laughs> Come in! Just, just shut up, you sick, depraved! <laughs> Come in! <laughs> what are you doing? The fucking breaststroke 50% at a time! Eddie Dessard! I told you before not to tell me your foul, deviant fantasies. Oh God, I won't be able to sleep tonight. I won't be able to see by tomorrow morning. <sighs> think Kenneth Clark. Richie, just think Kenneth Clark. Kenneth Clark. Kenneth Clark. Kenneth Clark. Kenneth Clark. John Selwyn Gamma! <laughs> oh, it's gone. Oh, oh, I've forgotten about that. Hey Eddie, look at this. Wrong one. Wrong one. Take a look at this. <laughs> what do you think? BBC. How did you get all that in your trousers? Well, there's plenty of room in my trousers. Sadly. <laughs> and where did you get it from? Well, I found it in the back of a BBC van. I mean, it was just lying there, so I thought, I'll take it. I mean, I pay my licence fee. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, but they don't know that. <laughs> Master criminal. Thanks, Eddie. Right, now this is the plan. Mm -hmm. We are gonna make Actually, if that's if that is actually a proper BBC camera, it'll be worth a lot of money. Like You know like even little small handheld cameras that amateur photographers buy. Not even particularly good ones. The little ones with a really like a decent lens on them, they can be anything up to a a grand, a couple of grand. That's a proper handheld, you know, for when they're shooting. That that would be worth some serious wedge. Just a criminal. Thanks, Eddie. Right now, this is the plan. Mm -hmm. We are gonna make our own movies. Right, right. We're gonna get famous, and we're gonna get our pick of the birds. Ah, <sighs> right. <sighs> Let's make nine and a half weeks. No, no. Nude birds go upstairs to Eddie's bedroom. <laughs> no, Eddie, 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 come back. Honestly, you're so naif, aren't you? It's far more wily, my plan. Far more wily than that. Okay, who is the sexiest man on TV? Well, Kill Roy, obviously. Of course, of course. <laughs> Kill Roy. What I'm going to do is I am going to make my very own prime time current affairs discussion program. <laughs> That's right. 
You heard me right the first time. Pretty crafty, eh? Yeah. And if that doesn't get me sourced to Singapore and back, then I'm a Dutchman. Hello, Jacob. Hello. <laughs> Orangey boom, clog, dyke, wind, mill. Shit! <laughs> Clog, dyke, wind, mill. Clog, dyke, wind, mill. Shit! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Action! Hello and good morning. Should traffic wardens be armed? In the studio. <laughs> You've been framed. Come on, let's do it again, and this time I'll turn the camera on. Oh, we can make a fortune out of this. Money? Yeah, if you really hurt yourself, you can win up to a thousand pounds. Everybody loves a. His face is covered in shit. Light-hearted, bone-crunching, near-death experience. <laughs> this is the first time in my life that Rick has been on my screen and I don't want to look at him. <laughs> Never thought that would happen. I think we may have found our milieu. Shall I get a mop and a bucket? Yeah, get a bus. <laughs> Jeez, we've got a camcorder. Yeah. All we need to do is to record an hilarious accident. What about and dog? And dog on and an skateboard. And dog on an skateboard that accidentally hangs itself and then catches fire. This is good, Eddie. This is good. This is epic. This idea is catching fire. Right. Casting, casting. Get me some dogs. Get me some dogs. Uh, get me some dogs and uh, get me some jod purrs and uh, get me an eye patch and a casting couch uh, with a nudie bird on it. Uh, major jugs. I mean, major jugs. Major jugs. Right. Eddie, I've got it. It has to be a wedding. It has to be a wedding. We've got to move with the market, Eddie. This is the 80s after all. Right. <laughs> it's the 90s, you knob. All I need to do is to find a bird, get her to marry me, suddenly have a lot of friends to come to the reception, Good and then suddenly at the dance afterwards, bam! Somebody accidentally falls over a bit. A bit. Or you could accidentally catch a dart in your head. <laughs> you may have something there, Eddie. Yeah, I think it's syphilis. <laughs> oh! I mean, everybody loves a dart in the head, don't they? Yeah. That'll have the grannies wetting their knickers. I mean, toddlers falling off trikes. Pa! This is the real stuff. We're living on the cutting edge of family video accidents. <laughs> Let's do it! <laughs> what the? Uh, oh, it's just another ordinary day in my kitchen. I hope. <laughs> Look at the rollers. <laughs> Goodness gracious me, no viciously hilarious accidents happen. Oh, Marjorie? Yes, dear? <laughs> Cut! Ow! The dart's in the eye! Ow! The dart is in the eye! Yeah, well, I can see that! Oh, that's not funny, that's just an accident. All right, reset to go again, everyone. Oh, no, I'm the only one here, aren't I? <laughs> all right, all right, I'll do it all myself. Ow! Ow. Oh, God! Oh. Now, for Christ's sake, try and catch it in your forehead, darling. You're not indispensable, you know. Oh, go again. Oh, go again. <laughs> right, here we go. This is the one. This is the BAFTA. Try and enjoy it, Eddie. And... Action. <laughs> Just another ordinary day in my kitchen. 
except that I've lost the sight in one eye. I hope to goodness gracious nothing horribly amusing happens today. <clears throat> What's Marjorie? she doing with that hand? Yes, dear. Kids. Oh dear, I feel all dizzy now. I hope to goodness gracious sake I don't fall into this frying pan full of hot burning fat. No, don't tell me that's what's gonna happen next. <laughs> no, you can't do that. So I'm all inflammable now. Uh, matches, matches. Come on, look at these in the audience. <laughs> Out of the frying pan, into the fire. Genius, now the window. Oh, God, someone's left the window open. No, someone has left the window open. Oh, well, I still hope I don't fall out of it. Ah! <laughs> Look at the state of him! Oh god, there's got to be an easier way of becoming famous in the 90s than this. Surely. <laughs> Just, I don't know, be in the Stone Roses or something. <laughs> you were fabulous. I cried. You cried? Yeah, I cried. When I realised we hadn't put the tape in the camera. Oh, fuck off! The tape wasn't in the camera. Ish. Does that mean there's a sort of problem with the recording? We are going to have to go again. What? Back to casualty? <laughs> You are a funny guy. <laughs> now come on, darling, time is money. Get back on your feet. I've retired! Back on your feet, ducky. A blank tape's no good to me. It... Oh, wait a minute. That's it. That's the joke. What? No one's tried that one before. Dear Gildo, I was filming my wife accidentally uh, sewing her head to the curtains when suddenly, <laughs> joke on joke, I realised I'd forgotten to put the tape in the camera. Take a look at this blank cassette. I think you'll agree, hilarity prevails. Right, so you're gonna try and sell a blank tape as the joke. Hmm. Let me ask you something, guys. If I made a video that was 30, to 60 minutes long and it was nothing right the video was this just a blank screen that's all you could see just this would you and, and, and I said this is the joke would you like that <laughs> what would would that joke land? <laughs> Seriously, what goes on in this guy's head? Please make the check out to Richard Richard. It's brilliant! Oh, Eddie, we better just check the tape, make sure it's blank. Oh no! We haven't got a video machine! Don't be stupid, Richie! I picked up 17 this morning, another 43 in the attic. Fantastic! Do you know how to wire them up? You betcha, matey. Step to one side. Well, it can't be that hard. It's just you plug it in the wall and then put the scout lead in the telly and that's it. <sighs> Seems ages since the carnival. Yeah, must be about a week now. <laughs> How's the video coming along? Almost unwrapped. <laughs> Almost unwrapped? Oh, 
Another wire. Mmm. A white one. <laughs> Over the hills we go. Hey, Rich! That's it! She's ready to go! Oh, marvellous! At last! <laughs> now, it took him until Christmas to... Installation instructions. What? <sighs> oh. Number one. You mean you're not done? Stick dine and cop in Den Hinton. I shall not dead there. He rattled his maracas close to me. Hi, Eddie. Oh, hiya, Rich. How was your holiday? Oh, it was marvellous. Glad to be back, though, because the carnival starts tomorrow. How's the video going? Well, your timing's impeccable because I only have to connect the scarf socket up to the lamp connector, like so, and... <laughs> she's ready. Inside a year. Oh, sterling work, Eddie. It's taken him a year to wire up a VHS machine. Uh... <laughs> Come on, let's fire her up. Fucking hell! Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Video Repairman. Crater Malibu for cash. That'll do it nicely. <sighs> and uh, watch out for the top step. <laughs> you bastard! Get some every time. Yeah. Give me five, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did. They're great, these American things, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> right. All set, slap in the ca- No, if it were American, it'd be five shots. Set, Eddie, and let's check it's blank. This is it, Eddie. We're gonna be frolicking in vodka-flavoured clover from here on in. <laughs> there you go, completely blank. Hey, hang on. What's that? What? It's a room, I don't recognise that. It's not in our house, is it? Oh. Hold up. Who's that coming in? <gasps> it's the Prime Minister. Stand up, Eddie, for God's sake. <laughs> Stand up! Salute! So <laughs> First of all, it's not the Queen, but you wouldn't even do that for the Queen either! That's <laughs> enough of that! Good afternoon, sir. Eddie, put a doily on the telly or something, for Christ's sake! <laughs> Sorry, sir, carry on. Is, uh... Is that his bedroom, do you think? Oh, very much so, I believe, yes. <gasps> this is obviously an informal walkabout at the Prime Ministerial Private Apartments. Oh, it's very informal, isn't it? He's taking his shirt off now. <laughs> They've ended up with a sex tape of the Prime Minister. Wait, why has that been recorded on a BBC camera? I need answers. Yes, yeah, really. The Prime Minister's nipples. <laughs> uh, yes. The Prime Minister's nipples. <laughs> yes, really. The Prime Minister's nipples. <laughs> Great honour, sir. It's obviously very hot. I hope that's the only honour he's going to bestow on you, if you know what I'm saying. Got a very hot todger as well. Oh, what? <laughs> Hang on. Who's she? Oh, that must be his mummy. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's obviously Prime Minister's bedtime. Ah, yes. I see. That makes a change from Prime Minister's question time, doesn't it? Prime Minister's todger time. <laughs> Must be a new prime time show. <laughs> on demand, on, on subscription only. Yeah, you've got to pay for that. It's available on the .gov Patreon site. <laughs> <laughs> that is very unusual behaviour, isn't it? Well, maybe she's just chaining him to the bed in case he falls off. <laughs> Yes, 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 that must be it, yes. And look, look, she's very hot too. Look, she's taking her dress off. <laughs> oh, look. She's brought him a little present. What is that? A sort of model of a moon rocket, isn't it? <laughs> what is she sticking in there for?
for? <laughs> Maybe she's trying to take his temperature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that must be it. Yes, yes. He's obviously ill. Yes. Well, that would be why he's Not so... as ill as you yes, two. Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, look at the oh. poor little mite. Yes. He's groaning and thrashing around yes. the place. He's obviously got a very high fever. Yeah. And that's why she's sucking the poison out of him. No, no. I'm done. See ya. Sucking the poison out. First of all, you only have to suck poison out of someone if they're bitten by a snake. So that begs the question. How the fuck has the Prime Minister been bitten on the dick by a snake? I'm lost in this episode. What is going on? What have they found? <laughs> and that's why she's sucking the poison out of <laughs> I wish I had a mum like that. <laughs> Something, Eddie. What's he saying? Turn the sand up. Oh, no, I think it's mute. Well, you can lip read. What's he saying? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Discombobulatingly marvellous. Oh, oh. Uh, my mummy wanging the bell end. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, my darling. Yes, yes. Keep going. You're, you're about to reach tier two in this lockdown. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> You're causing an inflation. <laughs> I'll stop now with the Boris Johnson related penis humour. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Ah. Ah. Oh, he's, he's calmed down a bit now. Hang on, who's she? That must be his, his auntie. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's very friendly, isn't she? Is she? I think they must be sisters. Yes, that'll be it. No, don't sit there! She can't have seen him! But he'll suffocate! Oh. <laughs> I can't think that that's hygienic. <laughs> seen happen am I right in thinking <laughs> that it's similar to when Richie was reading a certain book and he reached a certain page and 
he exclaimed. I don't think I've got time to grow a beard. <laughs> I think that's what we're here. Yes. I can't. He'll suffocate. He'll suffocate. I can't think that that's hygienic. Why not? The Prime Minister's having lunch. Fish pie. Etiquette. Yeah? Is it just me, or do you sense a slight <laughs> sexual undercurrent? Oh, wow, you we got don't there! I suppose that what we're witnessing here is Prime Ministers perving about in a career threatening, once in a lifetime blackmailing opportunity for two wily old desperados like us. Time. <laughs> Where's the phone? Stand back! <laughs> Quick, phone <Born> Reuters. <laughs> <laughs> now that's how you dial. <laughs> Stop. Because I want to blackmail him. <laughs> Richard, Richard. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Prime Minister. Because I want to blackmail him. Okay. Is that you again, George W. Bush? <laughs> to give my name away. Huh. Eddie, you all have to phone and, and use an assumed name. Right you are. <laughs> yes, hello. I'd like to blackmail the Prime Minister. Uh, uh, Richard, Richard. <laughs> Such a stupid idiot, Eddie. You bloody fool. They'll be onto us now. Oh, don't talk bollocks, Richie. It'll take weeks for them to catch up with us. Oh. <laughs> it's the police. <laughs> that joke it's a motorbike not like you know it's one of them bikes that sounds like you know thanks for them to catch up with us Please. <laughs> 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 they say they've got the place surrounded by the SAS. It's a siege, Eddie. We've got to think fast. Well, that's us knackered then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, should we give in now? Oh, yes. No! Sandwiches! That's it. It's a siege, right? If we handle this right, we could eat like kings. Okay, good thinking, Eddie. Leave this to me. Right. Hello? What kind of sandwiches do you do? <laughs> sandwiches! Sandwiches! <laughs> They say they don't do sandwiches. <laughs> They're a highly trained anti-terrorist organisation. No, tell them they're talking to the wrong... <laughs> they say they don't do sandwiches. They're a highly trained anti-terrorist organisation. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock! They say they don't do sandwiches. They're a highly trained anti-terrorist organisation. No, tell them they're talking to the wrong bloke. I want three egg, two crab paste, and one avocado and black pudding with white and tomato ketchup. And a can of Tizer. Let's stop it. Did you get all that? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> what does he say? He says, throw out the cassette now, or he'll kill us immediately. Right, well, let's start negotiating downwards. Uh, what about Ritz crackers, Twiglets, those little cheesy nibbly things? Nice, nice. OK. Leave it to me, Eddie. <laughs> what about Ritz crackers, Twiglets, those che cheesy little nib... Li fuck off. Uh, what about Ritz crackers, Twiglets, those little cheesy nibbly things? Nice. What about Ritz crackers, Twiglets, those cheesy little nibbly things? <laughs> Right, okay, leave it to me, Eddie. Listen, you're not on the phone to Ocado. <laughs> Hello. We take your point on the sandwiches. Uh, what's your position on canapes? Canapes! Oh. oh, damn. I suppose a helicopter's out of the question then, is it? <laughs> what about a nudie evening with Carol Barnes, the popular newsman? Look, I want half a 
Mark Curley will hear a packet of love arse, and that's me final offer. Jesus. Circumstances can change awfully quickly these days, can't they? Yes. <laughs> this is the 70s after all, Eddie. Whoa. This guy's going back in time. Hello. Bo -bo 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 -bo. <laughs> Hello, for more, for more, for more. <laughs> Fucking Manuel now from Forty Towers. <laughs> oh wait, no, I'm still again. No, 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 no. Sorry, no, no. That's gay, gay. No, Juan from Mind Your Language. Hello, for more, for more, for more. Hello, for more, for more, for more, for more, for more. Still again. <laughs> Yes, hello, the colander. <laughs> yes, we've got your hint. Eddie, throw down the video. Right, you are. <sighs> what does he say? He said, this ow. <laughs> I'm not surprised. When he said throw down the video, he didn't mean literally throw it at him. What does he say? He says, ow. <laughs> Go A squad. Go A squad? Go A squad! <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Then how is their life shows in a movie? They've just been killed! <laughs> what the fuck? I did not expect it to end like that. Anyway. It's the last episode, so... I couldn't resist. Um, I didn't expect it to end like that. They shot them. <laughs> Richie and Eddie are dead. <laughs> so, I don't know. Where do we go from here? If they've been killed, <laughs> What happens next? <laughs> Is it a prologue? Everything that happens now, for you know, all the live shows and the movie, the all prologues. But there's another show that's already a prologue, isn't there? Filthy Rich. That's that's it. That that's. Ah uh, well, I mean, I don't know what happens from here, but I didn't expect them to be killed. <laughs> wow. Whoever the Prime Minister was in 1998, not, not, wait, no, wait, was this, so wasn't Tony Blair already have been the Prime Minister then? 
Who was it? Who was it before him? Was it John Major? I don't know. I wasn't even born when Tony Blair was elected. I don't think. But whatever was on that tape must have been bad to want to kill them. <laughs> but anyway, um. That's the end of the show. <laughs> ah, God. You know, it's been one of an experience, this. Um, I didn't expect this at all. I, re I remember how it started. It was, you know, one of my patrons requested this, and he's disappeared since. I mean, it was, um, I think it was in August, at some point, he, he just disappeared. Disappeared off the Patreon and YouTube, you know, it's like he's just been wiped off the face of the internet. But I'm glad that the, that the last thing he did before he disappeared for whatever reason was re request this. Because, I mean, I wouldn't have known for that. You know, how can you know about something you don't know exists? But I am glad that he he told me, you know, he asked for asked for this. Because I've already said it, I've pretty much said everything praiseworthy that I can about the show, these two, any you know, anything that I need to say it's been said. But I'll keep saying it because I don't make decisions like this so quickly. So when I mean what I mean my decision is, so I'd pretty much decided by the time we were on episode four of this series, I think I'd decided that this was already the f the best comedy I'd ever watched in my life in terms of how funny it was. Um. It's definitely the funniest show that I've done on the channel, both channels, over the last year and uh, three months. Easily, it is. It's it's the funniest. I just I, I cannot think of anything else that makes me laugh as much as this, and it's not just the first time that I watched it. Which is already impressive in itself, because you know some comedies you have to watch them a few times to really get it. But that wasn't the case with this. But it's when I go back and watch this again, when I watch the, uh, you know, I, truth be told, I watch the reactions, but I can watch the episode through that anyway. But I go back and watch, and I still, I just laugh as much as I ever did. There's nothing else that does that really. You know, if I go back and watch a still game reaction, I'll still laugh at certain bits, but not as much as the last time and the time before that, and so on and so on. You know, it sort of wears off as you watch something a bit more. Um, I mean, Holy Fools and Horses, I'll always laugh at that. But, yeah. Um, gimme, 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 when I go and watch them reactions, I'll laugh a lot. Any, you name it, anything else, you know, my, mind your language. Whatever it is. This is just a different level of funny. You know, corruption gets your life in prison in China. What a ridiculous country. Uh, but yeah, it's just hilarious. I can't believe how funny it is. And I didn't think that I'd take to it like this. You know, I really didn't. It's just not something that's happened before. God, this is how desperate I am for a drink that isn't Coca-Cola. Look, I'm drinking Prime. Fuck me. First time trying it actually. 
just tastes like cheap supermarket pop. How the fuck were kids in this country literally fighting each other by this shit? This is the orange and mango in a can. Do you remember when that prick in Wakefield, Wakey Wines, he was selling these for a fucking grand each at one point last year? Why? It's fucking... It literally tastes like cheap supermarket pop. It tastes like that tropical fucking blast from Aldi. Fuck me. If anyone can explain the, the prime craze, like why it happened, how it happened, how it lasted so long. Please do, because it'll never make sense to me. How the fuck were people paying a grand for a can of that a year ago? In Wakefield of all places. Nobody in Wakefield pays a grand for anything! Not even a car! <laughs> Jesus! Not in the part where that prick shop is anyway, put it that way. Uh, but yeah, back to the point. Um, funniest show ever, I've ever seen. Rick Mayo just absolutely, completely become an instant, instant fan of his. He is just... Uh, I, don't, I don't even want to call him funny because it doesn't seem enough. He's not funny, he's beyond funny. He's just, a, he's like a, a, a cartoon, a living cartoon. You know, we did the thing the other day, didn't we, when he was on the Terry Wogan show in 1984 and he did a stand-up bit before the interview. And it was just, ah, oh, it was, there's some great stand-ups out there, you know, really funny people. Like when Robin Williams, he went on Terry Wogan in the 90s and I mentioned this during that reaction actually. When Robin Williams was on Wogan, it wasn't an interview. Terry Wogan could barely get a word in. Robin Williams, you know, he, he just kept making a joke Wogan would just sat there pissing himself. Basically, Robin Williams conducted the interview himself because he'd make a joke and then Wogan would say two words and he'd, and he'd manage to find a way to turn that into another three, four minutes of gags. That's a great interview. One of, probably the funniest interview I've ever seen. But the difference with Rick is he did his stand-up bit, which was hilarious, and then in the interview, he was like a different person. You know, he was so, he, so calm and polite and just but he, he he put a little you know a little gag in every now and then like he'd say something a bit cheeky and then he'd turn to the crowd and say the crowd and say have you paid or he'd make it you know that that iconic face of his you know i've yeah i've become an instant fan of rick and it's um you know over the course of my life if, when I've gone on the internet and watched comedy online or wh wherever it is, where it's comedy, drama, sport, and I've discovered somebody else that I haven't heard of before, and then I'll go on a little rabbit hole of research, look them up to find out more stuff about, about them, and I'll see, oh, they actually died a few years ago. I'll be like, oh, oh, well, that's a shame. When that happened with Rick, I was genuinely devastated. Like, really, really sad that I'd discovered this guy that I've never heard of before. I know, I'd, I'd seen his face before because I'd seen, you know, Drop Dead Fred, I'd seen that DVD video case before. I just didn't know that, that was his face on it, the guy with the big spiky hair. But yeah, when I found out that he was actually dead, I was absolutely gutted. Because I was like, once, you know, I've watched Bottom the Young Ones and whatever else we're going to do and all that kind of stuff, all these interviews, because I'm going to do it all. That'll be it. You know, it's a bit like all the great shows that have ended. If you, when you go, when you start watching things like Holy Fools and Horses for the first time, that's over. Faulty Towers, it's short. But... weird I've never someone that I've never heard of before then I start watching a show that he's in and I think by the time I was doing 
I think I think it was when we got to episode two or episode three. I said it in the opening monologue of the reaction that I'd discovered the night before that he was dead. It was that quick. So like after the first episode or the first two episodes and then finding out he was actually no longer alive. Good. That's how quick he had that effect on me. Like I genuinely missed him. And wished he was alive more than anyone else in the world, celebrity-wise, at that point. Even more than the Queen. Honestly, I'd wish. I'd rather have him back than the Queen. Because Rick actually does something for me, whereas the Queen doesn't. He makes me laugh like I've never laughed. He makes me enjoy watching a television show like nobody has ever done before. And he's just somebody that I'm like, I need more of that. Every time I watch him, it's never enough. It's like, I need, oh, I need more, I need more, I need more of that. I need to see more of him doing this. I need to see him doing more of that. And Yeah, Aid is the same. He's still alive, thank God. Not quite on the same level as Richie, but uh, as Rick, but yeah, become a fan of his immediately too, and uh, very surprised when I realised that he was actually Joshua in EastEnders a few years ago. I had no idea, but yeah, these two together. Another another thing that I also decided was these are, in my opinion, the best comedy duo since the two Ronnies. Maybe even funnier. So. I don't think you can get much higher praise than that in British comedy. If someone even considers comparing you to the two Ronnies, you know you've pretty much made it or done a good job. I'm sat here saying they might be funnier than the two Ronnies. In terms of writing, you know, the quality and the comedy genius of what they wrote, I don't think anybody will ever beat the two Ronnies. But it's how the jokes are executed and the type of comedy that they do. I think these two are funnier. I think. In fact, I don't think they are. You know. Whenever I've watched the two Ronnies, and it's not much of it. You know, I've never actually been a, a super fan of them. I've only watched the odd things. But when the ones that I have watched, I've never been almost on the floor screaming at the two Ronnies. It's only ever been, ha, 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 you know, that kind of laugh. A loud laugh, but not hysterical. Whereas with these two, it's pretty much every joke they do, I am almost on that floor. <laughs> so, yeah, funnier than two Ronnie's, easily. Fucking hell. That took a turn, didn't it? I went from saying, oh, they might be funnier than the two Ronnie's, to, yeah, they're funnier than the two Ronnie's, easily. <laughs> In about, what, 100 seconds? I don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing that for. I haven't got a watch, but, you know. <laughs> oh, I hate that this is over. I'd have watched this for 20 series. It had never been boring. If, if, as long as it was as good as, it, as it's been, up to this point, I'd have watched this forever. Oh, it's so good. I hate that it's over. And then... And that it's so short. I hate it. Oh, that's fucking horrible. Kids are really drinking this shit. Like. Oh. It's because it's sugar free and it's full of that sweetness shite. That's why I don't like it. If it was full sugar, I might might I might. Fuck off. It might not be too. See, it's turning me into a retard already, just like it did all those kids. I've only had three fucking gulps. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's got the double whammy of sweeteners. It's got the one that gives you cancer and the one that gives you dementia. Oh, well. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Best show that I've done on the channel. Funniest comedy I've ever seen. Best comedy duo for me. I don't think you can get three higher accolades than that off anybody. I'm just, you know, I'm really curious to know how many people I know that have seen this 
And if it turns out that it is in fact most of them, why have they never mentioned it to me? Especially family. Because, you know, they all, they, they know I love me comedy. And if any of them have seen this and they enjoyed it, why wouldn't they have mentioned this to me? And same with anybody else. You know, I, I'm surprised. I'd never heard of this. Never come across it, except when browsing on Netflix or whatever. And I'd see the poster, and you know, it'd be these two scruffy blokes looking at me as I'm browsing. And I was just like, no, oh, next. I, d I, d I didn't give it more than a second thought. It was just one look at the poster. I was like, no, next. And that's it. But apart from that, I'd never heard of this. Never seen it on a, you know, a comedy compilation DVD, and I had a lot of them as a kid. I had the BBC's Greatest Comedy Moments DVD, and they were all on there, you know, Malcolm and Wise, Ollie Fools and Horses, Two Ronnies, you name it, they were on there, but none of this. It's like, it, it manages to hide itself. But when you actually look properly, you'll find that it's got such a following. You know, it's like um, a cult classic, except unlike with a movie that's a cult classic. So what cult... Cult classic is basically a nice way of saying that a movie, a particular movie, is shite, but a few people like it. That's not the case with this, because this isn't shite. It's funny. <laughs> it's good, but it's got like that kind of status. You know, it's kind of... It's not visible to everybody even if you're not looking for it because I've never found it so that that's what I mean but uh <clears throat> yeah this has been one hell of an experience just unbelievably funny and I doubt I'll ever find anything else like it I don't there'll, there'll be nothing funnier than it I know that well at least I think I know that. We'll see. But. Just, Different level. Different level. Different everything. It's just a style of comedy that I've never seen before. They use it all so well. The physical comedy, it's done when it's... The way that they did it, it's not overdone. The fights, it always seemed like the fights that they had were the perfect length. You know, they didn't go on for ages. They just beat the shit out of each other for 20 seconds. But it felt long enough. And it was... Just the little things like that. Put them all together and it makes this magical comedy show. It's just, you know, Rick doing his bit where he's overly enthusiastic and overly expressing himself. Like when they were trying to think of funny words and he was like, yes, 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 <laughs> you know? Just those little things that he does, it, it just makes this brilliant thing. I'm going to miss this so much. But I suppose I should stay positive. Because that means I can get to the live shows now. And the movie. And then we'll be on the other ones that they've done. The comedy, the comic strip. We've got that to do in the future. Filthy Rich and Cat Flap. That sounds good. I've had a couple of people say what that's roughly about. That sounds really good. And, um, mm. so, don't despair, we've still got things to do, people to see, things to do, riches to see, and eddies to see. <laughs> but yeah. Also, I've been made aware that there is an interview with both of these two. On the Jonathan Ross show. I'll be doing that soon as well. That's going to be fun. 
being able to see them together, not on a show, just them to the act, the actors, not characters, the actors together. I'm really looking forward to seeing their uh, chemistry, how they bounce off each other. I'm expecting it to be like twins, because I know that these two were best friends for most of their life. Did did they go to college together? Sure, I heard that somewhere. They've known each other since they were like college age. I know that for a fact. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that interview with both of them together. Just to see what they're like in a normal situation. You know? And seeing how... They, I, I, I bet they've got more chemistry than fucking Eisenberg. Or Walter White. Whatever you want to call him. More chemistry than Walter White. There you go. Uh, but I guess I'll end it there. It's just, it feels, it feels like the end of an era. It really does. Yep. But, there you go. It had to end sometime. So, I'm ending it now. So, as for the live shows, the first one, I don't know when I'll be doing the first one. But don't expect it to happen like tomorrow night because it won't. I've got other things to do and I don't want to jump straight into it and then have them done within a week. I don't want that. Um, but, you know, but I'll get them done soon. The first one will be done soon. Try not to leave it too long. And I know somebody said, don't worry, they're all available on YouTube for free. Yeah, thanks for telling me that, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. I mean, have you seen some of the fucking Rav C. Nesbitt episodes that I've had to react to? Because it's not available anywhere else. And I'm sat there. I, I literally remember one of the episodes that I did where I was like that, saying... Who's that? I can't tell. I, I couldn't tell who somebody was. So just because something's on YouTube for free doesn't mean it's a good thing. Remember, there's a lot of fucking idiots out there that don't know shit about technology. That upload fucking potato copies. So, I think I'm just going to buy the live shows on a streaming platform. If I can find it, I probably won't admit I find it. But that can be your job. If you can find me a high quality hoppy, that'd be fantastic. So please do if you can. I'd appreciate that. Um, but yeah, that's the end of that. So thank you to everybody for you know being a part of this. It's been really popular on YouTube. Um, yeah, just when I've put these on YouTube, it's it always brings you in, brings you guys. It's brought quite a few new people to the channel as well, which has been good, and um, that's always nice to see new people finding. The content and the channel. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'm going to miss this so fucking much. Like you won't believe. So. Um, what I will say is about the live shows. Come and join us on the Patreon. Because that's where they'll be going first. And that's where they shall stay. For a while. Uh. But they'll be available in the same tier as bottom, which is the cheapest one. So, you know me. I won't charge anybody more than 70 pence a month because I'm too much of a fucking mug. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody for being a part of this and watching it. And, you know, everyone who's liked it, commented on it. Just been, just been a part of this since it started. Yeah. 
And I've enjoyed all the little comments with the trivia and the stuff about these two. With, you know, about Rick and Ed. It's been fun. It's been really, really fun. And I'm going to miss it. I really am. Big time. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye. So please like the video and subscribe. And thanks everybody for watching. And I hope you have a good night. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.